Water Clips, a video series on revenue resiliency topics for water utilities, their boards, and stakeholders. Financial Benchmarking for Water Utilities Tracking a utility's financial ratios is a very useful management and decision-making tool. Financial ratios help you measure your utility's financial strength, stability, creditworthiness, and growth capabilities. Monitoring how key financial ratios track over time or how they compare to other utilities allows you to assess current financial performance, determining if you need to change rates or financial policy, and helps you plan for future growth and development of the enterprise. But too often, water utilities summarize and compare their financial condition through one and only one metric, the price of water at one point of consumption. They display a bar chart that compares their monthly customer charge for water against what other peer utilities are charging. When only comparing prices alone, the incentive is to have the lowest price, period. Communities brag about having the shortest bar on this graph. And while there is nothing wrong with striving for affordable rates, looking at this metric by itself provides only a very narrow perspective on the system's overall financial health. It's kind of like comparing your wealth to others simply by comparing cars. It's just not the whole picture. Having low rates does not necessarily indicate that a system is covering the true cost of the service in the most cost-effective manner. Behind a small bar may be a utility that is not collecting the revenue that it needs to deliver high-quality water, good customer service, ensure the long-term future of the system, and protect the environment. Of course, that could also be the situation behind a high bar. You simply can't answer all of the important questions about finances from one comparison alone. How well are you recovering costs through revenues? How much can you reinvest in your system's infrastructure? You have to dig deeper. A utility, its boards, its funders, and its creditors should take into consideration a range of financial metrics to get a more complete picture of the financial stability and health of the utility. A series of financial benchmarks and targets are important for providing long-term guidance for a governing body and in creating a common framework for the utility to make decisions. And because such ratios are widely used, they enable managers to compare their own utility with industry-wide averages or standards. Deviations from the industry benchmarks may be helpful in identifying problems. This video will cover some of the most common financial metrics and what they tell you. Current ratio is a measure of short-term liquidity, or the ability to pay your current bills. It is most often calculated by dividing unrestricted current assets by current liabilities. Look at it from the perspective of having a car. Current ratio is a metric that shows whether this man already has enough cash to pay his current bills and keep his car going. The gas bill, the loan payment, insurance, and the mechanic, if he needed one. It's the same thing for a water utility. Because the cash or unrestricted current assets and current liabilities change from day to day, this ratio really only gives you a single snapshot in time. Another indicator of financial security is a utility's days of cash on hand. In essence, this is how much cash a utility has saved up that isn't earmarked for anything else, known as unrestricted cash, and estimates the number of days the utility can pay its daily operation and maintenance costs before running out of cash. It is calculated by dividing a utility's unrestricted cash and investments by the average daily operating expense, excluding depreciation. There are no natural objective targets for utilities to aim for. The higher the number, of course, the more protected your utility will be against revenue shocks. But the target value is subjective. Generally, a utility should aim to maintain several months' worth of cash on hand and at the very least exceed the length of the billing period, which is usually 30 or 60 days. In 2013, the median days of cash on hand for a AAA-rated water and sewer utility by Fitch Ratings was 427. So, for half of those AAA-rated utilities, if they completely stopped making money, they could afford to operate and maintain their system for well over a year. Days of cash on hand for our man tell him how long he could afford to drive his car if he loses his job. Operating ratio offers a broader perspective on self-sufficiency. It's a measure of whether revenues were enough to pay for expenses. As calculated here, the operating ratio is the total operating revenues divided by total operating expenses, although sometimes you might see this ratio inversed. Total operating revenues are primarily money coming in from the sale of water, your monthly charges, penalties, fees, connection fees, and other charges you set for service. 
Operating expenses are the cost of operation and maintenance, like the cost of operating and maintaining pumping facilities, the cost of chemicals, salaries and wages, billing, administration, customer service, and the like. You could stop there and calculate a ratio that captures the utility's ability to cover its day-to-day -day operations and general upkeep through the revenues they generate. But a more complete ratio goes ahead and also includes depreciation with total operating expenses. Depreciation is determined by accountants as the value of an asset spread over the life of the asset. While not a perfect indicator, depreciation is used to summarize the cost of replacing capital assets at their original price. In lay terms, this can be understood as the annual cost of wear and tear on the system. The man in the car may be wise enough to factor in the cost of replacing auto parts and tires as they wear down. If you set aside money to cover the depreciation value, then theoretically you have enough money to replace the asset to its original condition at its original price. This is not a perfect indicator of the necessary capital costs, however, because costs have gone up over time, and the types of asset you need may be different in the future. The man in the car will likely have to pay more for tires in the future than he did four years ago. So a more complete operating ratio divides total operating revenues by the total operation and maintenance and depreciation expenses. This is a better operating ratio than the one discussed earlier because it has some small measure of capital costs included even if it's not perfect. It is an indicator of whether or not a utility is collecting enough revenue to operate and maintain its current system over time to maintain the current level of service. As calculated here, an operating ratio that is equal to 1 means a utility is doing just that. But in reality, having enough money to replace infrastructure at future costs or to add new assets, that will require an operating ratio greater than 1. For this man, a more complete operating ratio will not just tell him if he can afford to drive the car. A more complete operating ratio will show whether or not he's been saving for the eventuality of when his tires go out and need to be replaced. Without including depreciation in the formula, he may have had enough income to keep his car going, but then is hit by a large expense that he hadn't planned for, even though he probably should have. Of course, we don't live in a cash-only society. Many people borrow money to pay for big ticket items like cars, and many utilities borrow money to pay for their infrastructure as well. This next metric is a measure of a utility's ability to pay for its debt, as its name suggests, a debt service coverage ratio. Debt service coverage ratio is calculated by dividing net revenues, which are operating revenues minus operating expenses, excluding depreciation, by the principal and interest payments on debt for the year. Obviously, a debt service coverage ratio of 1 is the minimum that you need to pay back your lender, but generally they like to see a little bit more coverage than that. In fact, most bond covenants or loan term agreements specify exactly what this ratio needs to be every year, and the target is often 1.2 or higher, meaning that the lenders require the utility to have enough revenues coming in to pay operation and maintenance costs and debt service and still have an extra 20% or more as a buffer and security for lean years later on. Many utilities exceed that target. The median debt service coverage ratio for a water and sewer utility with a AAA bond rating from Fitch Ratings in 2013 was 2.7. That means that half of those utilities with the highest possible bond rating from Fitch Ratings after paying for their operations and maintenance, had enough revenues left over to pay for 270% of their debt service. That is, of course, very high. More utilities are single A rated, and the median debt service coverage for those utilities in 2013 was 1.9. With a debt service coverage ratio of 1.9, the man in the car is pretty pleased with himself. His paychecks are enough to pay for running and maintaining the car, pay his car loan payments on time, and still have more revenue that he can save up to buy a better car in the future. Of the ratios described in this video, operating ratio and debt service coverage ratio provide the broadest perspectives of financial sufficiency and financial performance for the utility. There are also many more metrics that utilities, their boards, their creditors, and lenders take into consideration when gauging the financial health of a utility. Metrics to indicate the debt burden of a utility, like debt to equity and debt per capita, are kind of like a credit score for our man. There are also metrics to measure the affordability of rates relative to customers' income levels and metrics of how much the utility is reinvesting in its infrastructure and how long it would take to replace its assets.
Financial metrics are useful in providing a framework for discussion and decision making. But just like the dashboard of our friend's car, no one dial can tell the whole story. Selecting a series of financial ratios, deciding on realistic and positive targets, and monitoring the performance of the utility's finances over time against those targets is an excellent way for a utility to create a vision of what it wants to become or a baseline below which it doesn't want to fall. It's a management tool that can help ensure a financially resilient utility. This video was created by the Environmental Finance Center at the University of North Carolina with funding from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and the Water Research Foundation.